What is going on everybody and welcome to another SVM or support vector machine from scratch tutorial as well as part 27 of our machine learning tutorial series where we left off we're building our support vector machine class and we're working on the fitment the training and better known as the optimization for the support vector machine we got all the way to while not optimized and uh, we're passing at the moment and we're going to go ahead and pick up here so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to iterate through B's. So not only do we have to check and step through the W's, right? We also, not so basically not only do we want the minimum magnitude of vector W, we also want to have the maximum B, most bias possible. So what we're going to say is for B in MP.A range, so MP.A range is very much like just Python's typical range, only it does a couple of things for us. Mostly though, uh, it allows us to say how much of a step do we want to take at a time is what we're, why we're going to use it. Also, it's probably more efficient than range. Anyway mp.a range and we want b to go from a range of negative one times uh, basically negative one times self and let's do this negative one times self dot max feature value times b range multiple so that is the first value in the range so that's basically it'll be negative let's say uh, 50 okay so that might be negative 50 then what we're gonna say and actually I'll just hit enter here so that's the first value the next value will be self dot max feature value times B range multiple so now it's negative 50 to 50 next you can say in this range like normally Python's range just wants to go by one so if you said range 0 10 it would go you know 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8, 9 10 and so, whereas here, what you can add is how much of a step do you want to take each time? So we're going to say the step will just be st step by B multiple. <clears throat> and again, the reason why we want to have this B multiple now is we don't need to take as small of steps with B as we do W, right? So, uh, so we're just going to multiply that step by five because this is a very costly step that we're going to take and the reason why it's costly is we are not going to give B the same optimization treatment with big steps smaller steps as we are doing with W you could add that in if you wanted but that would just add more complexity to this and I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible yet not as absurd you know we don't want the SVM to take you know five minutes to classify these six samples <laughs> that we have. Uh, so that was my main objective, which is not to take forever. So anyway, uh, so we'll stick with this, but just know that you could you can use the same stepping idea with B. We just aren't going to do it here. So anyway, there's that. <clears throat> Next, let's see, 4B uh, there, and actually B, let's see, this is actually not gonna go right under. This is an actual for loop, so colon at the end of that enter and then you begin you may want to put that all on one line to make it clear I just didn't want it running off the screen so now we're gonna say is for transformation in transforms we're gonna uh, transform W now so we're gonna say W underscore T for transform W basically <clears throat> is W I'm getting a little excited W times transformation so where uh let's see step and stuff size so w transfer where's our transformation there there okay so here you have your beginning of uh transformations that are happening here and so then for each of these transformations we're just applying that to our original w which we're acquiring from here where the original w is just the, the maximum value that we can get uh, basically latest optimum and then we're multiplying that by 10 so for example did we define our sample data we sure did so the, the largest value here is clearly 8 so it's 8 times 10 80 so then W we're gonna run through a bunch of W's that could be anywhere between negative 80 and positive 80 <clears throat> so there's that next 
what we're going to do now is uh, basically we're going to test it. And first we're going to say found option equals true. Um, innocence until proven guilty, basically. We live in a civilized uh, society. So what we do here is for i and self.data. And here is the weakest link, weakest link in the SVM fundamentally, we'll say. Um, SMO attempts to fix this a bit. But SMO can only fix it so much, right? So <laughs> if you have 15 terabytes of data and you're only able to get it to the minimum sizes and chunks of uh, 92 gigabytes, <laughs> okay, you still got to load 92 gigabytes in memory. So anyway, uh, but this is the weakest link, not in my code necessarily, but in the SVM fundamentally is that we now have to run this function or this calculation on all of the data to make sure it fits. So for i in self.data, we're going to say for xi in self.data i, because self.data is a, um, a, uh, a dictionary. There we go. So i is the class. We could even say for y in self.data, but we'll just do this for now. For xi in self.data i, what do we want to do? Well, we'll say, I'll just say yi equals i, just so it's totally obvious. And then we're going to say if not, and remember, what is the constraint? What is that constraint function, right? That constraint function is y sub i multiplied by x sub i dotted with w, whoops, dotted with w plus b needs to be what? Greater than or equal to one. That's the function. So if not y sub i times np dot dot, this is just so we can dot these things, <clears throat> wt for that transformation, xi plus b greater than or equal to one. If that is not the case, found option equals false. So what we do is for everything within the data set, we initially say it's true, but if even one of the samples does not fit this definition, the whole thing is thrown out, okay? And you could even um, probably throw a break here and then maybe another check like here, if not or something like, or if found option. Anyway, you could, that's one sp spot to speed it up. I'm gonna keep it the way I had it initially, but <clears throat> basically as soon as you find a false, you might as well just break that. Like there's no reason to continue on with checking any more samples from that class or the other class. But anyway, we'll keep it for here for now. So then what we're going to say is for transformation, because we, at this point, we don't like, we're, we'll test each transformation separately. So if found option, so basically if everything checked out, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say opt dict, uh, let's see, NP, mp.linalg.norm. So again, this is how you can do the magnitude of a vector. It's, you, you know, the a squared, b squared, z squared, and all that fun stuff. That's the magnitude of the vector. So, and then that is going to be equal to, and we already said we were going to do w, t, and b. I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about this break thing. Um, I'm thinking, like, maybe add a break here later. Because uh, I really think that'll that'll save a lot of processing, actually. Because probably a lot of the variations, the first one will violate that that, and so you wouldn't actually have to test. You wouldn't be wasting your time. Possibly, well, you'd still waste time on B, but anyway, I'm gonna have to think about that break. So now what we want to do is we're gonna come down, and we want to be in line with this four B. So once we've finished running through every B option and every transformation option. What we want to check next, basically from here, is if uh, if w zero. So this is just really either of the w's because they're identical. But we're going to say if w zero is less than zero, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say optimized equals true. That doesn't necessarily mean we found the best value, but this is or maybe better put step optimized or something like that. We'll keep it as optimized though. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print optimized. Uh, optimized a step 
And the reason why we can say less than zero is because we're transforming here. So if B is five, five, we've tested five, five, negative five, five, negative five, negative five, five and negative five. So we don't need to go any further past zero at this point. So we optimized a step <clears throat> else. If it's not less than zero, then we need to take that step. So W equals W minus step. And just for clarity, someone, someone more familiar with the math fundamentals of a vector could, could, can, can tell us, but currently W is equal to something like, let's say five, five. And then step is a scalar value. So step might be one, right? Step might equal one. And when we say W minus step with under these circumstances, the answer is 4, 4. I'm not sure mathematically that's valid. I know with multiplication that can work, but I, I don't think that works with minus, but someone can some, someone can tell me for sure. But that's what's happening. So maybe officially step would be more like, it should be more like W minus step, step or something. I just know we can get away with this. So, uh, so yeah, someone can correct me, uh, but I don't think that's actually supposed to be the case normally in normal math like if you wrote that on a math test or something you'd probably get in trouble <laughs> so anyway uh, once that's done the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to break out of the the entire basically while loop uh, so at the point where because um, that's what while loop and then you still want to take your next step but for this entire step in theory, if, if this is triggered, we have hit our optimization values. Let's assume we hit that. So, you know, if you come down, you're in line with the else, one more delete, and you're in line where you want to be. We're going to say norms, not roms, norms, equals sorted. And we're going to say it's the sorted value of n for n in opt dict. So we're just simply sorting a list of those magnitudes. Opt dict, the key is the magnitudes. So we're just sorting them, and when you sort them, it's from lowest to highest. So which one do we want? Well, our opt choice is going to equal norms, and we want the zeroth element there. And we just want that first one. So now we have our opt choice, and finally we can set some, some values. So we can say self.w equals opt underscore choice zero, and then we can say self.b equals opt choice one so uh let's see norms zero sorted norm yeah we yeah, <laughs> i thought something was weird yeah so opt dict uh and then we need to do norms zero so this opt choice is opt dict norms zero there we go okay so the logic here just so i didn't lose anybody these are just the norms or the magnitudes or whatever. We take sorted, and that's just a sorted list of all the magnitudes. Then we're going to say the optimal choice is going to be optict, where the magnitude is the zeroth element of norms, so the smallest norm. And then that dictionary, if you recall, it's magnitude of W colon WB. So self.w, zeroth, there it is. Self dot, uh, B is the first -th element, and we have our, our stuff. So once we've done that, the other thing that we want to do is we're also going to set the latest optimum, optim, oh, I always want to call it optimum, equals opt choice zero. Uh, let's see, opt choice zero, zero, plus step times two so latest optimum we come back up to here basically where we initially set that value for it to basically be your step we're resetting that so later on when we go to reference that latest optimum like when we go through the first step it's this value when we go through the next step and in fact we could even we probably should not be hard coding that too we should match it to whatever this is but whatever anyway we go through the next step and now we're in the you know one percentages for each step in that smaller value though but it's at one percent of the original value so that's why we're not <laughs> like growing in size uh anyway so we'll step maybe we make that step but we're modifying this each time we go through so so if you wanted to get more and more precise 
the only addition or the only change you would need to make is by adding yet another step. And just to recap too, remember in the fundamental tutorial, maybe like, I think it was the very last one before we started coding, how would you know that you ought to take another step? Right, what was the logic that we used to take another step? Well, the, the logic was that support vectors, let's go up here, support vectors will be equal to y sub i x x i dotted with w plus b and uh, will will equal one because it's y sub i multiplied by all that. So you will know that you have found a really great value for w and b when in both your positive and negative classes you have a value that is close to one how close to one can be up to you, but you can eventually just set something to be, you know, uh, I want to at least be less than two or something. And, or maybe you want something that's like 1.01 .01 or, or better. And until you hit that value, you just keep stepping. And then maybe you hit the, hit a max step. And each step is an order of magnitude smaller, basically, or divided, divided by. Um, where basically that just means each step size is an order of magnitude smaller. Anyway, uh, you could keep doing that if you wanted to be totally dynamic, but some problems can't be optimized. So at some point you do want to like stop <laughs> because some problems you're just not going to get, at least with a linear kernel. And then some, some really just can't be optimized. But anyway, uh, we'll talk more about kernels in, in another tutorial. But so at this point we, we've, we have finished our optimization algorithm. Uh, and we'll probably come back to explaining how everything works there, but uh, that is done. And so now, well, all we have to add pretty much at this point is we're going to adjust. Where's our prediction? Did we not? I thought we wrote the prediction. Yeah, it's down here. <laughs> that darn white space from Sendex. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, so we got a prediction. That's pretty much done. We are going to add something there, and then we got to do the visualization and then we'll actually run this and we can see what our lovely work has done or we'll see some errors and we'll fix them. <laughs> so anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.